You see the altar and the pulpit here decorated with uh, bright African cloths. Um, we had a parishioner, Gail Goodrich, who this, this year, this summer, lost her battle with cancer. Maybe you read in the bulletin that uh, uh, she left uh, $200,000 to be distributed for social justice and for the poor. So that will be administered uh, to, the, to the poor. But besides uh, the money that she left, she, she had spent her life working for NGOs uh, that worked most particularly in Africa on health and welfare and family. She spent time both here and, of course, years in Africa. And uh, in that time, she acquired a lot of beautiful African art. And besides the $200,000 that she left for to continue that ministry, she left all of her, uh, her African um, art and clothing and stuff. So, uh, if you would like, uh, she had good taste, so uh, if you like, you can uh, purchase some. And all of the money uh, will go for projects uh, in the benefit of Africa, a place that was she had worked and was very close to her heart. So, in fact, you can buy these things right after Mass. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite beautiful, actually. This, this someone can wear, I guess. But uh, besides that, I want to say that uh, the second collection today is the annual, I guess it's been 30, 35 years, 40 years almost, that we've had the collection the Catholic Campaign for Human Development. Uh, and this specifically goes for uh, empowering the poor in uh, America. In other words, it's, uh, it's ministered or it's given to groups that organize on their own behalf to make their life better. It's not a kind of trickle down, but a, a welling up has had tremendous effectiveness over the years. So it's an annual collection that I encourage you to support um, each year. And it's always around this time. And the second collection tonight is for that. And then uh, after Mass tonight, I invite you for wine and cheese, uh, but really to talk about affordable housing in, uh, in Arlington County. Uh, those of you who live here know there isn't much left. And, uh, and the question is, will we lose it all? And Mary Rouleau, an expert uh, from um, Arlington Housing Solutions, will lead a discussion. And you get wine and cheese too, how good is that? You know? um, so after Mass in Benedict Hall, uh, you're all invited. Uh, there is a possibility but it needs concerted uh, effort to save, uh, we've lost uh, about 10,000 units of affordable housing in the last 10 years in Arlington County. And at that rate, there'll be none left unless we, we work. And the county board is open to it, but we need people also who know what's at stake. So after Mass, join me and join Mary Rouleau for a discussion. The readings today are what they call apocalyptic. Apocalypsis means unveiling. And uh, both in the Old Testament and, of course, the Bible itself ends with the book of Revelation. When I was a child, they call it the apocalypse. Now they call it the book of Revelation. And all of the four Gospels, in particular Matthew, Mark, and Luke, more than John, have uh, passages like one I read today from Mark chapter 13. And the whole of chapter 13 of Mark is, is apocalyptic, is talking about the end times. And of course, the church year ends uh, uh, on the, uh, the next Sunday. I mean, in other words, not we don't follow the calendar year. The church year, the liturgical year begins in Advent, the four Sundays leading up to Easter, to, not Easter, Christmas. <laughs> I'm, I'm ahead of myself. So, um, and so they, they, they use these last times versions. Now, there are two, 
two kind of tendencies. Um, if you watch uh, many of the uh, shows on Christian, uh, listen on Christian radio or see on some of the Christian, uh, God, Christian channels, you'll notice that there are many shows and many uh, Christian preachers that focus on one aspect. In fact, they, they uh, I've watched some, you may not. Do, do any, am I the only one that watches this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I'm in the business. So. <laughs> but but let, let me tell you that some of them focus very much on the end times and they, they take Thessalonians and they take Revelation, they take Daniel from the first reading, they take a little bit of Isaiah and they take certainly from Mark 13 and from Matthew uh, 24 and they kind of put them together figuring out what's the end time. I don't know if you, uh, I used to listen for uh, when I was driving at night Christian radio and there was a, a preacher named Harold Campy and uh, I don't know if maybe I'm the only one that listens to these things but, uh, uh, but he, uh, he predicted last, not this May, but Last May 21st, when the world was in. And it didn't. And then, uh, then he moved it ahead to October 21st, that last year. It did. He's off the radio. <laughs> <laughs> the danger is this that's one side, is to be fascinated and say, this must be predictive. Maybe I can figure out. The danger of that, I guess there's nothing really wrong with that, except that it pulls us away from living our life now. For example, Thinking about the end times can be so fascinating. Is the Lord coming first? Is the tribulation first? Is the rapture coming? Or whatever. It can be so fascinating that, for example, we wouldn't bother about, oh, well, what who cares about Ford Plows? You know, what the heck? You know, I'm not going to be here. I'll be raptured. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? That's the danger. You get, you get sucked into it. But, these, these are valid readings on the other side. Because what they rose from is a long history of suffering. In every age, the Jewish people experience, and for about the f uh, four or five hundred years, uh, six hundred years before Jesus, almost continual suffering. You know, uh, whether it was the Babylonians or the Assyrians or the Romans, and, and that sparked in them, how do you deal with that? Decade after decade, century after century of not being, having your own uh, direction, of being, have, being oppressed. Well, they never lost faith. The Jews never lost faith. And they expressed it, they, they were honest about the end times, the darkening of the skies, the, the march of battle, the, all of that. They could, they, that could be part of their liturgy. But always, as you heard, I don't know if you were listening in the Daniel reading, but Michael will come, and those who are just will be saved. In other words, they could face the worst possible things in life and still believe that God's uh, promise is true. They held on and believed. They knew that as bad as things could be and were at times, they could still live on. They could, they, that God would in the end. And so, there is a place, and the early Christian community experienced the same for the first 300 years. Uh, the, the Christians experienced uh, pogroms, persecutions, periodically, etc. And they, but in the book, in the Revelation, they held on to the fact that in the end, God would now, you say, well, that's interesting. I'm not particularly persecuted now. How does that apply to me? Well, on a personal level, and sometimes even a, 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 a national level, but certainly on a personal level, sometimes we go through long periods of really bad things. Right? Um, Gail, the person who left this, she dealt with cancer on and off for 12 years. Battle the time. And lived fully the whole time. A woman of great faith and vision. She, her faith, in spite of the fact she had to deal with it over and over and over again and battle back to health, uh, 
She never lost it for herself. A deep, abiding faith that made her want it, even in death, to share, to do something for the world. Do you see the difference between concentrating simply on, oh my God, it's going to be awful, and finally God's going to come and He's going to take care of those bad people. He's going to pay them back. Those bullies, those that supervisor, whatever. <laughs> the person who fired me, you know, they're gonna, it's gonna get, he's gonna be paid back. Well, you know, I, what, the, the other thing is that you cannot be crushed in Jesus Christ. You know? Yes, you're gonna die. Every one of you, every one of us will die. For sure. Take it to the bank. But that will not be the end. And no, uh, no trouble, no persecution, no reverse uh, can lay you low if you hold on to Christ. And that's the thing. Jesus says, learn a lesson from the fig tree. You know when the, the branch gets uh, tender and begins to sprout, spring is coming. Here in Virginia, when I see the crocus come up, sometimes out of the snow, uh, I see the hyacinth, which is one of the first, and then the daffodils. I know spring is coming. It's that kind of promise. Even nature tells us that, that God's will, that, that as nature revitalizes itself, so God's promise is there. So these readings, this, they speak to, the, they may not speak to people whose life is great, but they do speak to people who hanging by a thread, who want to believe and, and don't know how they can hold on. The promise is that the word is true. That you will, you and I will be saved. We will conquer because in Jesus Christ who saved us. I'd like to end it. Um, Gretchen did a glorious job singing the uh, psalm and I Actually, I would love to have you sing it again, but let's just listen to it. It's not as good as the, the way it was chanted. It says, O oh God, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body, too, abides in comfort. Because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. You will show me the path of life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights of your right hand forever. You are my God.